Let's start at the end, which is also the beginning. Um, so the 40s closed the program today, but it opened the company in a sense. It was one of the first works that you created when the company was really small. Uh, you created it in 1978 and... Um, 77. 77, thank you. They started performing in 78. They started performing in 78. So the, yeah, the company, but the work, this work, the 40s, was in was created in 77 okay so at the time i'm sure you didn't imagine that one day the title would refer to the company's age <laughs> so what's it like to see this work on this company during the 40th anniversary season what are some of your what, what's it like to see it on this company I'll today just here keep it short it's terrific it's it's amazing that uh, it's still they're still performing it, and it's, uh, yeah, I and I still like watching it. <laughs> Barbara, for you, when you first joined the company, can you tell us about the company that you first started working with, and um, and what attracted you to working with this, this small company? What was the, the promise or the excitement that you saw and what they were doing that was fresh and, and exciting in Chicago at the time? Well, what attracted me was Lou Conti, because he was capable of creating dance that didn't exist in Chicago. And his background and his style of, of theater dance and jazz was just outstanding and the time was perfect. It was perfect in Chicago. People loved us immediately. And it was because we had something fresh and interesting and really high quality. And Lou was always just so particular about details. And we were watching, we were watching the 1983 performance of the company today on video from here. And we're just amazed at the, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> just amazed at how well rehearsed the company was and how exciting their performance was. So one of the exciting things about this program is to see kind of the roots of the company and also to see where it is today. And Glenn, you've been running the company since 2009. Um, and so can you tell us a bit about um, the other three works on the program and kind of how they represent um, what Hubbard Street, the, the expansion of Hubbard Street's artistry, and um, also what it, you know, what it meant to you to put together this program that kind of represents that arc and trajectory of the company. I just love having them here. Um, just to go back a, a little second, they were at the archives today. Hubbard Street performed the 40s here exactly 35 years ago, August 3rd, 1983. So they just realized that, and we all just put that together uh, today. It was literally August 3rd, 35 years ago. So, and to put this program together, it's just wonderful to see the range of the company, to have them start with a piece from Oha Naharan and Decadence, where they're barefoot and, and doing that movement, which is so unique to Oha, and then finish with the 40s, you see the range of the company, that uh, it's immense. And I'm so proud of uh, the company for that. Lou, I was wondering if you could talk a bit about the decision to create a repertory company at the time. So you created a lot of the early works, also with Claire Bataille, and then you added on choreographers, but from the beginning you decided to call it Hubbard Street Dance Chicago. It was named after the location of the company. He did all of the choreography the first six Wait, years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he did all of the choreography. Nobody else did any choreography in the beginning. So just blue. This is good. This is work with her for <laughs> so even more so then the fact that you were the primary choreographer and and at the time it would it would be typical maybe for someone to okay, name the you, company. You, after you have themselves. to understand this. This was a very tiny little bitty 
group of four women to perform for senior citizens. So when you say company and repertoire and all that, we, we were only putting together a, a 35 minute program to perform for about five months in the different senior citizen sites. And I, I put it together, I had no, I didn't get paid for it. Uh, we got money from Urban Gateways, uh, each of the dancers got paid, uh, and then Barbara, well, okay, it's so complicated. Uh, after, after about seven months, uh, we decided that we would go forward and perf do some other performances, and eventually I realized that in order to do that, I needed to have other people working for the company and choreographing, and uh, uh, so the, it wasn't like a conscious decision to make it a repertory company, it just sort of evolved into that out of necessity, because I was limited. <laughs> When you started inviting in other choreographers, what were you looking for? What, what kind of um, identity were you interested in giving to the company? And, and who did you, you, you sought out and, and had a very close relationship working with Twyla Tharp, who gave, you know, created a lot of work on the company. Um, and so how was it that you built such a roster of, of great choreographers? Well, again, it took, it took a long time. The first choreographer besides me was Claire Bataille, who was a dancer in the company, and then several other dancers also choreographed. I, I was lucky early on because I had a school, and all of the dancers came from the school. I worked with them every day, all day. I knew them well. I knew what they could do, uh, and that, that made that part of it very easy. And then when I started hiring other choreographers, I just wanted somebody that could use the same vocabulary that they were using. But every choreographer that came in worked a little bit differently, and it increased the range of the dancers, and uh, they grew from that. I think the repertoire part of it was very important because it made, uh, the dancers would learn one thing from a choreographer and carry that over to the next one, and vice versa, and it grew. Uh, grew that way, so I, I didn't have a vision about you know what what I was going to look for. I just looked for people that I thought could make good dances, and I guess that was my vision. Glenn, can you tell us a bit more about Decadent Chicago and and kind of how that came about? The you know what makes it unique to you know what what earns the Chicago designation and, and the conversations that you and Ohad had, had about the works that you wanted to include or the the kind of. Um, mood or attitude that you want you wanted your version of decadence to encapsulate decadence chicago came um well in 2000 we did minus 16 and minus 16 is one of ohad naharan's uh, iconic works and for the 40th anniversary i apart from wanting to do the 40s i said well what, what else has been important to the company and minus 16 certainly was one of those pieces so i asked ohad um, to expand on minus 16 uh, where minus 16 is normally a 30 minute piece, he then created what is now called Decadence Chicago and put it into a two hour program. Tonight you saw the first act. And if you were then to see the second act, the second act has the minus 16 uh, portion of, of Decadence Chicago. So it, it was really a, an effort to say what has been important to the company over the 40 years and that was one of those pieces, and that's how we, we got to Decadence Chicago. Moving on to Crystal Pite, who's, I mean, this work is such a tour de force. It's a really incredible work, and uh, I believe it was the third of now four works that she's done for the company, and so a recent one that she created, I think just last year. Um, but when you, um, when you saw this work, how did you know that this was something that you wanted Hubbard Street to do? What, what about it was kind of the right fit, um, and, and also why, um, why have you continued a relationship with her? What what about her kind of feels like you know she gets Hubbard Street and vice versa? She does get Hubbard Street, um, and I'm fascinated with the way she rehearses and the, what she is able to draw out of the dancers and her just her energy and her spirit in the studio is really quite phenomenal. And the dancers have taken to working with her really beautifully. Like you said, we've had four pieces in our rep. We did a, a full evening of her work last December, and Grace Engine was one of those, along with two duets, uh, A Picture of You Falling and The Other You. And through conversation with uh, Crystal, having worked with the dancers already on another piece called Solo Echo, 
we talked about several pieces and she particularly thought Grace Engine would be suited well in the company. What are some of the things about that work in particular that are challenging for the dancers or that's new to them? Um, you know, with each choreographer, there's something that, um, you know, that they bring that's different. It's the kind of beauty and challenge of the, of the repertory company, always working with different styles and working with Ohad, the need to learn Gaga and to understand his movement language to get his particular quality. So what are the ways that the dancers adapt to that and, and how do you build in room into the rehearsal schedule to, to learn these new styles? Well, we had the, um, the stager, uh, Alexandra Damiani. She was the former director of Cedar Lake. And, she, and, and the piece was created with Cedar Lake Dance Company. And so she came to work with the dancers and she was also quite brilliant in the studio to reach each, dan each dancer individually and get the, the nuance out of each one. But the, as you see, it's an ensemble work and they all have to then mesh together. And that is also something that's important. And, and you see it in the 40s, each one is very individual but they work so well together. And I think that's um, a testament to the dancer's ability. The third kind of newer work on the program, uh, Alejandro Cerruto's Lickety Split, uh, which was created in 2006. And I mean, what a lucky find that within own, your own company, you had such a talented choreographer who has gone on to become the resident choreographer who's created over a dozen works for the company. So can you tell us a bit about what he has contributed over this time to the identity of, of Hubbard Street today? Well, he's now known around the world and he's choreographing all over. And so he is an ambassador to the company as he goes out and choreographs with other companies. But he often says his best works are with Hubbard Street because he knows the dancers inside and out. Um, uh, this was his first piece. The, the, one of the duets was done for our choreographic workshop. And uh, my predecessor, Jim Vincent, asked him to expand on it and then that came to be the work called Lickety Split. Um, he has uh, something something special about it. There's something warm and human about the work and there's some, you know, with, with Lickety Split, you feel like it's just a group of close friends who are all coming together and connecting in different relationships. And uh, often you'll see with his work, uh, there's something very genuine and human in them. Thank you.